or inspiring. You're looking in the wrong direction, and there's no need to whisper. I'm taking the general view. I mean, look, every night this dazzling cosmic display, and yet how rarely do we look up, look up, and see, crouching inside our little brick scabs with our tired quotidian thoughts, our grosser hearts beating with a humdrum drum. Oh, it is really unforgivable for a man to quote himself. <sighs> I didn't think you read my pieces. Proper scientist like you. Mm, I have read them on uh, two occasions, I think. Uh, useful, no doubt. I read things like that when I was a boy. A marvellous adventure that is science. It is. It is, but it's a... I, I agree with you, but it is my job. It's my job as I see it to explain, to educate, if you will. And while, of course, one wants to avoid a naive optimism... We could stop talking and uh, take a look, if you like. My dear Oakleby... Certainly. Come into the telescope hut. It's a little primitive. Not quite the Royal Observatory, I'm afraid. Don't go in much for comfort. Careful. Careful. There. Sit it. Take a look. Now, you should put your hand over your other eye. It helps. Uh, oh... I see it. Mars. Forty million miles away. It's not a distance one can grasp very readily. No? Look, I think it's very good of you to invite me here. We weren't best chums at school or anything. I got a telegram from my colleagues in Greenwich. There is concern. Ten nights of this phenomenon, and apparently people are afraid that lumps of Mars will drop upon their heads. No bad thing, in my opinion. I might knock some sense into the general population. Anyway, the powers that be want messages of reassurance to go out. You're a popular writer. So, these are massive volcanic eruptions. Very interesting, of course. Mars is an old planet, and you might well be observing its death throes. Well, that's one theory. An extraordinary amount of volcanic ejecta. But lumps of rock will not traverse 40 million miles and land on Mrs Jenkins' head. Some people wonder if they're trying to signal us. They? The Martians. Oh. Well, I don't think that, of course, but that's why it's important to get accurate information. I hope Mars isn't dying. Prime piece of real estate. A truly undiscovered country. Is it impossible that one day we might... Might what? Sail off to Mars? At our current rate of understanding, yes. It is impossible. Mind you, ask any man of sense a hundred years ago about the railways. We'll do it. Never fear. Da, do, do, do. Ba, da, da, da. Wait. Oh, yes. A, a plume. Bright. Must be shooting miles high off the surface. And, and, and dust, I can see. Huge, huge clouds of moving dust. That is happening right at this exact moment. Extraordinary thought, isn't it? You were lucky with the weather last night. Look at the mist now. You wouldn't have seen a thing. It'll clear in an hour. You look tired, poor man. Mm. I was up till three writing that blasted article. I'm not a journalist, you know. Of course not. Neither am I simple-minded. The way he spoke to me... Used to call Ogilvy Mr. Know-it-all at school. Hmm. One of the politer names, anyway. Trouble is, he did. Know-it-all. And still does. When's that talk you're giving at the Explorers Club? There's your Friday. Hmm. Friday. I don't in the least mind if you decide to stay up. I mind. It might do you good. I like the old home fire, Margaret. I like you reading to me in the evenings. I like me here, and I like you here. I felt it was my duty to go to Lydia's last month. With George off fighting in the Sudan and the poor baby with croup, it was only a matter of five days. Six. I'm just suggesting that I could pop over there if you were going to London, just for the nights you're away. What are you talking about? This is, this is all off on one of your tangents. I'm not staying in London. You're not going gallivanting around the countryside. God, I'm tired. Of course you are. I should capture you on a phonograph. I could play your voice to my heart's content, then. Don't. What do you mean? Well, photographs are one thing. I didn't like them as a child, but recording voices. It's... 
it's a voice, it's the breath of life. It seems so unnatural to preserve them, to sort of trap them. That's what I think. You don't. You don't in the least think that. That, that would be silly and superstitious. Remember when they used to say the human body wasn't designed to travel at 30 miles an hour? Steam locomotives, with the invention of the devil, our hearts would collapse under the pressure of that monstrous speed. Remember? How lovely it all is. Mist nearly gone. I think I'll go for a walk to the village. Better still, I will try my new bicycle. You were doing pretty well there, sir. Here, let me give you a hand. No, no, no. I can, uh, I can manage perfectly well. A stone in the road, that's all. Ah, nice solid bicycle, that. <laughs> Expensive, I'd say, Mr Fenton. Not that I should say. I'm something of a novice still. It isn't as easy as it looks. Oh, I hope you get time to enjoy it. <laughs> Shouldn't you be at work? Uh, I should, but I'm not. There's no point, is there? No more snagging turnips for me. I've just to clear my conscience and wait. You've been drinking again, Gus. I am in an exaltation without the need for drinking. We were talking in the pub last night. There are archangels flaming in the heavens. Next thing... The Kraken will come roaring out of the depths. We are in the end times, Mr. Fenton. God has written a word of fire in the firmament. Reaping and sowing are done with. The end of the world is at hand. Um, come up on Saturday. I have a good morning's work for you in the garden. Oh, right you are, sir. The watchman... Knock us upon the door. What? What else that? What? What type? Oh, damn! Take the poker. Take the poker. Keep calm, will you? Keep calm. Lock the door behind me. Go to your mistress and keep quiet. Who is it? We're not opening this door. Who is it? Fenton, open the damn door. Don't ask me a lot of questions. Just get your coat and come. It's four in the morning. Well observed. Coat. I didn't have to come and get you, you know. Robert? What's this about? Telegram from the Royal Observatory. Came to me an hour ago. Special messenger. Decided best to have another observer. You were en route, so here I am. Fetch him some boots, would you? Uh, a pair of trousers, possibly. Look, I'm going... Who is this man? I'm going in precisely ten seconds. Come or not? Trousers, sir. Is there a fire? No, madam. We had thought we were witnessing volcanic action on the surface of Mars. The Royal Observatory has revised their ideas. It now appears... Will I tie your boots for you, sir? It's highly possible that what we witnessed were huge projectiles being launched from the surface of the planet. Ready? Where are we going? Projectiles, man. Think of it. Launched ten days ago, and the first one appears to have landed approximately two miles from here, on Horsell Common. Are you coming, Fenton? Robert, listen. Wait! Well, it's hard to tell if it made that pit or, or landed in it. The, the ground is unstable. And there's bits of tree everywhere. How do we know it's not explosive? Well, we don't. <laughs> uh, we'll stay here and catch our breath. It's a decent distance. Can you draw? Uh, you did bring pen and paper. I always carry a notebook. Good man. <laughs> oh, by the way, I think you can call me George. Robert. Can you feel the heat? Yes. Definitely not a meteorite. You know what we're seeing. Yes. Manufactured, not man-made, though. <laughs> what a thought. What do you suppose is inside? Inside? Ah, yes, the obvious question. 
Well done for asking it. Here I am calculating the propulsive force required to lift an object of this size from a planetary surface, which is very interesting, of course, but ignores the most interesting question of all. What is inside? Ah, <laughs> good man, Robert. Thank you. I think we can assume that nothing living is contained within. This is no arc. The tremendous heat of propulsion, the terrible pressure, and the airless cold of space argue firmly against that. Well, given that, to speak speculatively then, can we imagine a dying planet, strange beings facing their end. What would one do in such circumstances? One would want something of one's civilization to survive. Possible, possible. So they would gather up their greatest treasures, their literature, their art, their science, music, from another sphere, things of unimaginable beauty, things of unimaginable ugliness to our human eyes, things perhaps we will never understand. We will in time. And in a gesture that absolutely combines anguish and hope, they have sent to us their legacy. <laughs> I think I could be right. I mean, why not? <gasps> Would you let go of my arm, please? What's that? Oh, my God, what, what is that? Near the base, it, it's, it's turning, it's unscrewing. George? Yes. Well, I think we should get closer. I don't, don't you um, think we should get help, perhaps? Why are you whispering? Well, that's a bad habit of It yours. can't unscrew on its own account. You must get closer. There's no choice. Come on. No, no, uh, we must get help. George, we, we, we must be sensible and logical. Stop moving. Well, you go then. It's only a couple of miles to Woking. Uh, we, we need to telegram London. They might not take me and my word alone. And Greenwich, together. We are both men with reputations. You have to come. The authorities need to be informed. It's our duty. That's 27 telegrams sent. <laughs> Never done so much in the morning, is that? <laughs> All comes to three pounds, 17 shillings and sixpence. Are you sure? Hurry up, man. People are heading for the common. Word has spread. I wish I had that damn and blasted bicycle now. Ah, uh, the terrain. No, the terrain. No, don't not... lecture me about the terrain. Just try to keep up. <sighs> sorry, sorry. God alone knows what a mob of mud-headed locals will make of our Martian ark. They'll have it dismantled by now. That is quite far enough, if you please. What? Who the devil are you? An intemperate tongue, I see. Restrain your tongue, or I will restrain you. Would you like a box on the ear, fellow? Get, get, get your hand off me. I am Isaiah Carswell. I don't care. I Who am you? Lord Hilton's man of business, <sighs> and this land is his private property. In his name, and under the laws of England, it is my solemn duty to claim each and every article that is on, or has arrived on his property, as his. Step out of My good man, I am Professor George Ogilvy of the Royal Society. I've been authorised by that august institution to investigate this phenomenon. As you can see, we rushed here with no time to dress properly. Sir, so it is a phenomenon. You have the right word there. No, my apologies. Uh, perhaps you gentlemen might assist me in removing the riffraff. I have sent for help. I have sent for the magistrate and the vicar. We want order here. Uh -huh. We do indeed. chap over there, he's selling bottles of ginger beer. Oh. <laughs> I've the police notified. I am warning you all now to leave Lord Hilton's pr property or you will be arrested as trespassers. Do you hear me? Can he get land on you, Carter? Lord Hilton isn't a popular landlord around here. Hmm. I think our best approach is from the left. Fenton, have your notebook to hand. Don't tell me. Come on. You don't want to fall into the pit. Are you from the newspapers? <laughs> Keep your eyes on that raised bit. It moved a moment ago. Look. That was the section that moved before. It's a door, possibly, of some kind. Perhaps it's stuck and can't... and can't break. Do you see what's inside? There's something moving. There is. Unfortunately, we are facing directly into the sun. Therefore, there's something crouched in the doorway. It's a, a beast. 
some poor bloody bear, isn't it? No, it's not. Is that blood on it? No, it's not. It's all glistening, though. Look at it. From the pit. A real devil. We must get closer. Yes. Yes, we must. Come on. It's breathing. My eyesight. What would I give for some binoculars? It's pulsing. No. Heaving. Laboring. Our air must be very different. Would you say like leather, the skin? Write it down. That is a mouth of a kind. Arms. Uh, tentacles, I suppose you could call them. Not like an octopus. No, not at all. Huge eyes. Very huge. Can it see us, do you think? What must we look like? It looks very ugly. Horrible. <laughs> that is not a useful remark. We are the first men in all of human history to see a creature from another planet. Is it in pain, do you think? Gravity. They must have anticipated conditions will be very different in our much younger planet. They must have prepared, surely. I wish I was better at drawing. Words are words. If we had a photographer... We will. We will have every resource we need. Everything. A couple of knighthoods. Oh, hello there. <laughs> oh, get back, man. What are you doing? No, I must prepare a full report for his lordship. I must inspect No, you the bloody young... mustn't. Keep what back. Area? What's he doing? The first man our Martian meets is Isaiah Carswell. It's farcical. Come back, you fool. On behalf of Lord Hilton. <laughs> what happened? What happened to him? Run. I've informed the military. I've sent a message to the barracks at Aldershot. Thank you, Constable. It'll be a good few hours before they get here. What are we going to do? Where's the landlord? Does anyone know how to work these pumps? I'm so thirsty. The last thing we need is an, an inter, interplanetary incident. The point is, the Martian fired in self-defence in what it thought was self-defence. Does everyone agree? Mm -hmm. A grey smoke, you say? In the aftermath, that's all that was left? Yes, Reverend, a little grey smoke. The actual death itself must have been instantaneous. I believe he was a Methodist. He would not have suffered. But Fenton is right. The, uh, being might well have thought Carswell's approach was aggressive. I've informed the military. Yes, thank you, Constable. I think of the interim we might endeavour to make clear to the being that we are intelligent, rational creatures. It might well have thought Carswell a mere animal rushing towards them in a threatening posture. Quite what they make of a platoon of soldiers with a cannon is another mm. matter. Now, we must, we must act quickly. They'll be here soon. They'll be here very soon. I suppose we must presume it is intelligent. It could not be here if it was not intelligent, though perhaps the word in the creature's context might mean something very different. Are we to assume it is one of God's creatures? Perhaps it is not the time to debate moral philosophy, Vicar. Personally, I cannot think of a better one. However, I sense you have something of a practical nature to suggest. Well, there must be a measure of improvisation. We are in Surrey, not London. How to communicate. Mm. That is our priority. Mm. Now, if it were night, we could flash Morse code by lantern. Mm. I just think it was some form of large insect. Firefly. Mm. Mm. So, I propose the following. We approach it. Them. I think I saw another standing, uh, crouching. Them. At the head of our little procession, a man uh, with a flag, uh, waving it in a rhythmical fashion, side to side. Hive Union Jack at the police station. Ah. A white flag. A truce, a gesture of peace. Not surrender. Might we prevail upon the landlord for his grandfather clock? He will be reimbursed. I think he's hiding in the cellar at present. Half the village has fled. We open the cabinet so the, uh, the workings are fully visible. Clockwork will clearly demonstrate that we are a scientific people. Um, a constable, you will have to push the barrow with the clock in it. Wasn't this more a matter for the military? <sighs> yes, sir. Now, what else? Ah, I will carry that piece of slate and some chalk. To write with. The landlord's reckonings. He won't be pleased if you wipe them out. Music. They might recognise music. Uh -huh. uh, the landlord's son, Freddy, plays the accordion, I believe. He might be prevailed upon. And wh what about me? W what do you, do you want me to do? Juggle clubs? We'll all take a glass of brandy. Steady our nerves. It's fair to say this is an historic moment.
It doesn't look especially impressive. Just huge. A huge bullet lodged in the body of our Mother Earth. That's a lion I might steal, Reverend. I make you a present of it. Are we ready? I wish I hadn't suggested Freddy for this task. I'm a man with two small children. We are the men who are here at this moment. And what we do may prove critical for the history of the human race. We have a responsibility. We must prove to these intelligences that we are rational beings. We must cross a great gulf of incomprehension and communicate. I'm ready. The small rise here will give you the best line of sight. Binoculars. Thank you for them, Reverend. Fenton, watch, write, each minute particular. Accurate, no flim-flam or poetics. Understood? Are you sure? I feel a bit put to the side. Freddy, strike up. Don't spill that clock, Constable. On behalf of the people of Earth, and more specifically, on behalf of the British people, and in the name of Her Gracious Majesty, I bid you a very hearty welcome to our planet. We are a peace-loving, rational people. Stop the accordion a moment, Freddy. I am now proceeding to write some scientific equations. Newton's second law of motion. This is irrelevant. Acceleration is produced when a force acts upon a mass. Your projectiles used that principle. Friends, let me... Margaret? Margaret, get here at once! Where is she? Sir? Is she in the garden? Get her, and after that, go home. Go to the devil. Get out of Ottershaw. Run! Are you very drunk, sir? Robert? Go upstairs. Pack your bag, take your jewellery. Go to Lydia's. Lydia's? Now. Do it this minute. Obey me. What has happened? Do you ill? Robert? You must explain Explain to what? What, what, what? What must I explain? You're distraught. Where's Mr Ogilvy? Vanished. Vanished into thin air. I mean that, literally. A, a little smoke. The heath is on fire. Why are you asking questions? We must get you away from here immediately. I think you're not well. I'm perfectly well. I, I've just witnessed... I, I've just seen her. I'll drive you to your sister's. Don't you want to see her? You're always saying you want to see her. Robert, you're frightening me. They have a weapon. Our visitors from Mars, nothing we can see, not like a gun with bullets, invisible, or, or, or we can't see it anyhow. It... I'm afraid you're not making sense. Robert, won't you sit down beside me? It burns us down to ash and smoke in an instant. That's where Ogilvy is. Ashes and air. And that poor, poor boy, that constable and the vicar. The vicar? They can't move out of their crash site, that's the thing. The gravity is too great, three times what it is on Mars. They're stuck. A decently aimed shell will destroy them. That's what they'll do. They'll destroy them. Can you blame them? But but the loss, the waste, all the things we'll never know now. Why could we? Please stop throwing my clothes about. Half of them are on the floor. You have to go. Now, before the real panic starts. But you intend to stay? <laughs> Please stop! I'm quite capable of packing my own bag. Oh! You! You with the handcuff, will you get out of the way? Where do you want me to go? You see? You see how bad it is? And it'll only get worse. Look at them. Lemmings. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Pritchard. Hello, Mrs. Fenton. Be careful of that ditch now. We'll be hours getting to Leatherhead at this rate. Imbeciles. Come on, get down. Give me your hand. Where are we going? The way is blocked. Railway station, I think. Will the trains be running? Of course the trains will be running. This is just mob hysteria. Give me your hand. What are we going to do with the pony and trap? We can't just leave them. The pony. We can't think about that now. Bought your ticket to London. Oh. Safest place. 
I've got to go directly to my brother's. He'll telegraph me to let me know you've arrived, and I'd better telegraph him to expect you. I don't want to go to your brother's. Don't argue with me, my love. I think you're overreacting. I don't know why I have to leave. I explained. I'll come in a day or two. I feel I must stay. I I've seen them. I might have useful things to say to the authorities. The military will be here within an hour in force. I'll be safe. And to be honest, to be honest, there is my career. I'm, I'm on the spot, the first man to see them. It places me firmly in the picture. Let me stay. I can't risk you. Things will be... I don't want to have to worry about you. If I left you alone in the house while I was out, Gregory will take care of you. I wish I'd seen them. No, you don't. It is all marvellous. Terrible, of course. But I do wish I'd seen them. These people don't look like first-class passengers. I'll find you a decent carriage. You'll have plenty of them. A gesture of such contempt. As though we were nothing. Boys burning ants with a magnifying glass. That's no good. Write up my notes. That's my job. Ogilvy would have expected it. What a pompous ass he was. A good man. Will you write something or not? One thinks with a new understanding and sense of fellow feeling how those poor natives felt when Captain Cook ordered his men to fire muskets and rubbish. Is that what you're going to do? Write rubbish? I shouldn't have sent her on that train. I didn't even say. I need to get out. I must speak to your commanding officer. I wouldn't mind a word with him myself. The gunners, not bloody guardsmen. I have information that could be valuable. Oh, I might be back soon. Do you smoke for me and the lads? Will you let me through? I, I'm, I'm serious. I have information. Another one of them's dropped. On by fleet golf course. Another cylinder? Really? You, you must let me through. Apart from orders, it's not safe, sir. There are fires spreading. Palm trees are the devil for burning. Be safer off at home, sir. Off you go. We should try to communicate with them. From a safe distance, it's such an opportunity. What is it? The Martians. We, we could learn so much. We could see ourselves in a new light. We'll have a, a point of comparison at last. They could explain so many things. I heard they was like octopuses. Not really. I've seen them. And now, Billy, we don't want to spend too much time listening to rumours or spreading them, do we, sir? There's a terrible racket coming from that pit of theirs at times, and the smoke or fog's permanent. You can't see anything. Just the old flame. You were from round here. But will you let me through? I'm a writer. I need to... Go home. It's getting dark, sir. We are not letting you through. What are they doing? Get home, sir. And don't bother trying to find another way. There's cordons everywhere. A nervous voice. With guns! <laughs> Benton, morning. I just dropped round to tell you I have your property. Doctor? Uh, what? Your pony and trap. Someone found the poor beast abandoned and brought it to me. Why? I have no idea. I'm not a vet. I I'm sorry. Uh, how did you get here? I thought they weren't letting people move about. What's happening? Well, medical men are the exception. We're allowed through checkpoints. I was in the area, very sick patient, and thought your wife would like to know about the pony. How is Mrs Fenton? Mrs Fenton is perfectly well. 
She missed her last appointment with me. I was concerned. That hardly matters now. It was just nerves. Good God, she's in London, if you must know. With my brother. Perfectly safe. You look a bit seedy, if you don't mind me saying so. Plan to go and join her today. That might be difficult. No trains, as far as I know, and the roads... I, are... yeah, I know how the roads are. They just wanted to keep the people at home while they sorted out the problem, hence the checkpoints, etc. You should have gone with your wife yesterday. I'm not sure I would have sent mine off on her own. <laughs> it's not my business. Still, they have the guns in place now. The cannons, I should say. Mighty instruments. It's all very interesting from a scientific viewpoint, of course. A tremendous event. I thought a man like you would be writing like a fiend and not... And not what? Well... That's the news about your pony, poor beast. We are all poor beasts. You might think of getting a grip on yourself, you know. And less of a grip on the brandy bottle. Margaret! Margaret! What are you doing? Eating a pie. It's a very nice pie. A bit old, of course. Good gravy. An army marches on its stomach. Old saying that. This is outrageous. Sorry about breaking the pickle jar. I'll clear it up. Do you have any beer? No. Why don't you fetch a whiskey decanter then? A chap like you is bound to have a whiskey decanter. Have you taken leave of your senses? I think so, yes. We met the other day, you know. What? At the checkpoint. You were trying to find an officer. Did you follow me here? No. This is chance, this is. Should make it easier, though. Me being a familiar face. I, I don't know what you're doing in my house. Eating a pie. That's all. Are you afraid of me? I think you'll find you are in very serious trouble. Oh, I found that out a while ago. Do you want to hear? Where is your sergeant? God knows. Ask him. Oh! I'll go and get that whiskey. <laughs> we were stuck on that road where you met us that day and the next. We had the big guns with the big range. Limber gunners went to the rear. We were in the sand pits, good for the recoil. It was all parade ground stuff, sweet as you like. Just as good as clockwork, going through the motions. Got my first low chambered, I think we did. And then, boom. I was lying. Looking at the sky, everything was silent and heavy. I weighed a ton. I couldn't move. I couldn't move because this dead man was lying on me. <sighs> Half of him anyway. Half a body with a raggedy end. <laughs> and the flesh was smoking. Real smoke that smelled. Ammunition store had blown. Good God. I nearly moved. I nearly pushed the poor blighter off me. I nearly got up. And then I saw it. I saw it. It came out of the ground. It had a head of sorts. Flat, flattened. Like it was wearing a hood. I thought of mushrooms, except it was metal. All metal. Three long legs were walking and it was carrying something in its... Let me get the whiskey. It went like a gun. There wasn't a recoil. It moved, twitched. Something... It was firing, though. Aiming and firing. And then... Pop! I could hear. I could hear men screaming. And running. And bit by bit, the sound died. The men died. It was killing them, this thing. I lay still, I lay still for hours. I knew if it saw me move, I'd be done for. 
There was more than one. I could feel the ground underneath me shake. And they tramped back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The whiskey. In the morning, when I could see, I crawled away. I found a puddle and drank. I couldn't eat you. I couldn't shout out for help. I took my time. Must have been afternoon, mid-afternoon, by the time I got to the village. Except it wasn't a village. It was a ruin. Burnt bricks. More bloody smoke. I think there were people there still, I mean, alive. I saw movement, but I also saw them. The creatures, a line of them on the horizon, staring down. Well, I don't know if they were staring. I don't know what they were doing. The roads are mad. People running up one and then running back down it, not knowing where to go, until they run into one of them and then they're going straight up in smoke. What do I do now? Sleep. But first, your clothes. You need to take them off and put them outside. They're disgusting. Sorry. I'll find something. What's the point of it all? We might as well have been shooting them with bows and arrows. We're done for. Bacon smells good. You must take every bit of usable food with us, sir. You do well to butter that bread. Bread is stale. A bit like my head. Doesn't matter. You can be grateful for stale bread. And talking of whiskey, you might find a hip flask and fill it. Come on, sir. Rouse yourself. You're very full of yourself this morning. I have to be doing, that's all. I don't seem to be rising to the occasion very well. I feel like an outsider in all this. I wanted to write something of merit, even lasting merit. I've got to find my regiment. What are you going to do? Not stay here, that's for certain. I heard there were more cylinders to the west and south of us. Ram jam packed with them, no doubt. I've not heard from my wife, that's the thing. Don't even know if she got to London. Three rashers each. Once they're cool and packed, I'm gone. I tried to send her to her sister's. She's not a favourite of mine, to be honest, my, uh, my sister-in-law. But she would have been happy there. The roads, though. The roads were bad, so I sent her to London. If you want the truth, I, I wanted to... Women can be a burden, don't you think? What have I done since? Nothing. I get like that. All fired up and full of energy, and sometimes it works, and sometimes I'm just... Icarus. Icarus was this boy. I know who Icarus was. And Ogilvy. You talked a lot about them both last night. I suppose I'd better go and find Margaret. That's what I have to do. Needs milking, I suppose. Everyone's gone. Everyone has gone. I'm for all the shop. We could go some of the way together. <clears throat> I'm going slow and sneaky. Keeping off the high roads and in the woods as much as I'm able. I'll travel. Are you... Are you really planning to go back to your regiment? Well, there's a question. I didn't mean... Are you accusing me of deserting, sir? I'm not avoiding checkpoints or that. I'm avoiding them. The creatures. I'm avoiding giving them a clear line of sight of me. Staying low, that's no, all. No, no, I see that. We'll be travelling companions, then. Once I've found Margaret, I think my best bet is to get to New Haven. To get to France. Poor woman must be terrified hearing all about this. Worried about me, no doubt. Poor woman. What's that? What is? That yeah, looks like my mum's Christmas cutlery. Very fancy. No, I meant him. Oh, him. Ah, I think it was heart attack did him. Not the heat ray thing. Now, we are going up this hill to take a look, see? So, we go up keeping low, understand? Don't show too much of yourself. Shouldn't we? Um... Dig him a grave with one of the forks? No. Come on. Uh, 
Look at that. Pure bloody panic. Trouble is, we have to pass through. I can see soldiers. <sighs> Suck an eye. Keep marching through. Aren't you going to report for duty? Not to them, I'm not. I'm a gunner. I'm not playing nurse, mate. You could hop up and get a lift if you like, sir. Over there. Those chaps in golf trousers, they look your salt. And they seem to have commandeered a nice looking omnibus. Officer, excuse me. Where are you taking these people? Are you going towards London? Out of harm's way, not London. How far away are they? The enemy. A few miles. They can move quickly when they want to. We have to get the field of battle cleared. Gonna charge them with your horses, are you? No, we're gonna shoot them with our guns. That's been tried. Then we'll try again. Who are you? We have a military look. We're just on the run like everyone else, aren't we, Mr. Fenton? He's my boss. I'm actually trying to locate my wife. How is the road ahead? You! I, move out! I'm, I'm trying road. to get. Phew. It's like a madhouse, isn't it? Look at them two carrying all their worldly goods between them on that door. And that old fool with his boat are on. We're not guys sailing, Grandpa! <laughs> They're not really panicked yet. Oh, not yet. Most of them are almost enjoying themselves. Beats doing a day's work, though. And we all love shouting instructions at one another, don't we, sir? Find all this funny. Right. Stick them in the water until they're really, really cold. Dry them. Bind them tight with these strips. Here. Then put your socks on, tie your boots firm, but not too firm, and you'll get another few hours out of your feet. Thanks. We could sleep here. No. No, that's what I say. Keep on the move. Don't give yourself time to think. So, on we go. I don't understand this. They're so much more advanced than we are in older civilization. We look different, but surely they would expect that. How do you know all that? That they're more knowing than us. They got here, didn't they? We couldn't do that. They must be more advanced, not just technologically, but morally. Surely. It doesn't follow. We haven't got any more peaceful and easy going as we've gone on, have we? I wasn't in South Africa, but I know a lot of lads that were. And the next big war we have will be something to see. If we're allowed to have one. Maybe they know what we're like, and they're putting pay to our nonsense. You seem to be very cynical. You know, you've never asked me my name. Uh, yes, yes, that was rude and remiss of me. <laughs> How old are you? Thirty-five. <laughs> rude and remiss? How you talk mouthfuls. It's Billy. Is there anything left to eat? Quiet. Look, it's, it's coming up from the valley. As he said, like a sodden grey can, can of, of, of worms. Oh, I hate the way it moves. Quiet. I hate her! Steady on. Don't you steady on me. I'm just asking you to keep your voice down. Well, oh, you're an hysterical old woman, you are. Drinking yourself stupid after passing your poor wife off heaven knows where, coward. God. You, you know I've I have a rock in my hand. A knife beats rock any day, you know that. If they set fire to the trees, we're done for. Get in the water. Get in the brook. Full body. Lie down. I can't die. I can't die, Max. Oh. Sing, shout. Block the noise out. Do you mean? I can't. I can't. All things bright and beautiful. Cannons to the right of the cannons to the right of the the the
There's a horse alive in that field. They didn't kill it. I wonder why not. You awake? I haven't slept. Just snored with your eyes shut and your mouth open. Come on, look lively, Mr Fenton. I'll get you as far as Shepperton Lock, and then I'll waste part. You'll have to look after yourself from now. I don't need... Can you ride? Yes. There's a bridle on the gate there. Give me a coat. It'll do for a saddle. What's wrong with your coat? Nothing. It is actually my coat as well. I'm freezing and still damp. Oh, all right. You warm up on the horse. I promise. Two sets. Now, now, now. My man's only in the backfield. And he's due home for his breakfast. Let me assure you, madam, we are only asking to buy a little breakfast. Some ham and bread and so forth. We won't ask to come indoors. I realise we're looking a little dishevelled. Well, about looking dishevelled. You look more like horse thieves from where I'm standing. That's Mr Alia's mare you're sitting on. For God's sake, I have no interest in the horse. I borrowed him out of necessity. Give me Mr Alia's direction and I will compensate him handsomely for the hire of his horse. Bugger off! Did you hear him last night? Rampaging? We bolted up the house. That wouldn't stop him. I could wrench that pitchfork out of your hands if I wanted to. Billy. Go on, then. We'd better go. Billy? Billy! They tried it before, and we've beaten them every time. Tell that to the Frenchies. Never shall be slaves. We sing it, and we mean it. The Frenchies. Oh, if only. Down here, Shepperton Lock. Then it all look like a dream, eh? All perfect, like a model village. That is the world as it was. Let's get there. I have never been hungrier in my life. Wait. Enjoy the view. Commit it to your memory. Look at the ferry bobbing about. All those people to in and fro in. At me as you like. And the market women closing up the stalls. Children playing. Very nice, very homey. And last farewell peak. Come on. You don't see much, do you? Look at the hill. Hmm? No, to the left. Half a mile. Oh. oh. Soldiers. Cannon. Ready and up to fire, which means our monsters must be nearby. They would have cleared the area, surely. Too many areas, too many people, too many Martians. See them? There's one now. Wading up the river on its horrible legs. Why doesn't anyone in the town see it? Hello there! Attract attention. See, look, there's another one. Come trotting behind the first. Oh, now the people have seen him. Now they've noticed. Poor sods. Oh, oh God. Oh, look. Running every which way. They're jumping in the river. Boiled or burnt. Those are the options. Probably a bit of both in the end. Poor sons. Someone, someone do something! Well, they should just fire anyway, our boys! The old locks are light. One minute it's like Toy Town, and the next it's a burning, bloody ruin. This goes to show. What does it show? There are hundreds of people dying down there. Show some feeling. What are they doing? Our shells are landing on the town. What's a fight to the death, this? We've got to fight how we can. Hit them. Hit them! Oh, my great and glorious give yard. Did you see that? Well, we got one, just as I said. Yes, we yes, got yes, one. yes, yes, yes. It's not down. It's coming this way. That's all cracked, eh? Look, you can, you can see inside the carriage. <laughs> oh, that is the Martian. That nasty stuff splashed down the casing. That's all that's left. He's, he's done for. He is done for. I wish it would fall down. Well, it is, look. It is. <laughs> But there are too many of them. So 16, 17. Why can't they hit more of them? It's not easy to hit a moving target, you know. Not with a cannon, but it can be done. Oh, we know that now. 
They are not unbreachable. We have a fighting chance! And that's all I needed to know. I want to get my swipe in. I'm off. Good luck, Mr. Fenton. Wait. Wait for what? There is my duty. Not my regiment, but they will need all the gunners they can get. <laughs> oh! My God! We've hit another! A complete blow-up! <laughs> what are they saying, I wonder? Well, retreat! Look, those shiny, long shank bastards are going! Look, retreat! Bully for us, eh? Bully for us, soldier boys! We've been standing here less than five minutes. Look at the place. It's so long. I'll be seeing you. Except I probably won't. Don't. Don't go. Well, in that friendly spirit, I hope you find your poor wife. Poor woman. I would stay here for a bit if I was you. Hide. It's going to get very, very bad. Tana! I have to find food. Lily? Joseph? Have you seen them? You, you know you're bleeding. <laughs> Down by the river. Can I help? Who are you? Have you seen I, I, them? I think you need to see a doctor. I, I think... Lily! Glasses broken, you're allowed to take what you like. Lord of war. I don't think that's true. Can't see any coppers though. Can you? No, look. We'll both take a loaf and I'll leave some money. That way we're both fair and square. Here. Warden's coming. <laughs> All right. <laughs> easy, easy. Keep your bread. I just want you to come with me. I beg your pardon? The curate's always been good to you and your sort. Now we need help. My name is Robert Fenton. Well then, Bobby, I'm Mr. Reeve, church warden. And it's time you earned that loaf of bread I saw you lift out of Mother Cardwell's window. Step lively. <coughs> We're digging them out. We'll get them out. And you'll get to the end of the line and help shift the bricks. I've my eye on you. I'm happy to help, Mr. Reeve. Only been finished three years, the church. Look at it. Was it one of our shows? Mr. and Mrs. Webster. Christening party this very morning. I did the arrangements myself. They were years hoping for that child. We've got to get them out. All right, Reverend. You sit there quiet. We'll get them out, never fear. We'll find a lot of them, never doubt it. There now, sir. You sit on that stone and rest yourself. You'll be as right as rain. Who allowed this? Did God allow this? Hush, sir, hush. There's people here listening. What have we done? Here, in this little town? How have we offended? How have we offended God? Will no one answer me? Will no one answer me? Will not one of you answer me? I think, uh, that, uh, I suppose, it, if one were to believe in a higher authority, one must always accept a certain level of inscrutability <laughs> in the actions of the divine. You see his handiwork here. Is that what you're saying? You just move the bricks. Leave the curate to me. Desolation. <laughs> Desolation. No! Oh, God. No! Have mercy. Have pity on us. Gently now, lads. Gently. What is that? Oh. It looks just like a little dead dog. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Give it to me. Uh, are we such sinners? Are we such sinners? Even this little child that you sent such devils to destroy us! Give back that baby, Reverend. You're shaking it about. Is this God's answer? Is this his answer to all our prayers? You need to give me the baby. Poor broken thing. Everything God does is just. Everything is designed! Oh, God. 
Greek we must family. believe in justice if we cannot believe in mercy. You and I and all of us will burn in the hell. He, the Lord of hosts, is busy creating for us. Uh, it's starting to throw stones out. I do something quickly. Uh, you missed uh, You missed me. You weak, stupid man. Have you no dignity? Hide the baby. I've got the baby. There's no need for any throwing anything. Get him away from here. Get him away from here now. In part one of The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, dramatized by Melissa Murray, Robert was played by Blake Ritson, Billy by Samuel James, and Ogilvy by John Dougal. Margaret was Sancho McCormack, the curate, Carl Prekop, the doctor, David Stern, Carswell, Nicholas Murchie, and the constable was John Bowler. Other parts were played by Maeve Bluebell Wells, Sarah Ridgway, Georgie Glenn, David Sturzecker, and Finley Robertson. The piano and the accordion were played by Colin Guthrie, and the director is Mark Beebe. Corned beef, an elderly loaf, but I've cut away the worst. Uh, apples, porridge for breakfast. We're well founded. And you got the fire going. Very good work, Mr. Prophet. It was easy in the end. Huge comfort in a fire, isn't there? Mm. Very ancient pleasure. How do you get it going? The books. I use them. What? Novels and nonsense. Well, I suppose necessity <laughs> strikes home a bit. I'm a writer myself, essayist, not a novelist. Quarterly Review, Strand, New Age. Two books as well, two and a half. I was um, midway through writing a history of the future. The wonderful 20th century ahead, all optimism, the glowing future. If you can imagine such a thing now. It's going perfectly well. You don't need to throw any more books. I'm cold. I'm, I'm so cold. Corned beef sandwich, anyone? Steal food. No. Seriously, you must eat. That will do you no good. Well, I've stopped looking for bread. Will we pray for your wife before you start drinking? No. If you don't mind, I don't think we will. Would you mind not looking at me like a hungry dog? I'm not a theologian, of course, but do you, uh, do you really think it a major sin to share the shelter of my umbrella? Stolen umbrellas. Where do you think they went? The Carsons are, uh, our unwitting hosts with their two daughters and their dog. I wonder what happened to them. The roads are very quiet. We mustn't imagine the worst. Perhaps things have gone well. Perhaps the, uh, the army destroyed the Martians, shelled them, to smithereens and we are walking down this dirty track for no good reason at all. <laughs> I have my appointed task. And you're looking for your wife, so you say. Of course I'm looking for my wife. What else am I doing? I hope Gregory's looking after her properly. I'm not sure she's over fond of him. Her brother can be a bit pompous. I sent her to him the moment this all started. London will be safe. We'll defend London. Remember what happened to the cities of the plain. I actually don't, and please don't remind me. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Would your wife look back? 
I think Margaret would. She was a compassionate woman. She is a uh, compassionate woman. Looking back will be an act of defiance. Let's hope she's dead instead. We must accept his will. It's hard. We must rejoice in his dreadful justice. Shut up, please. How much further is it to London? I don't know. I wish you'd make your own way there. We were brought together by Providence. She had bad luck, I call it. Soldiers? No. Not soldiers. Take down that umbrella, sir. Now, let's get a good look at you. Who are you? The Government Redistribution Authority. We're a, a newish thing, on account of the emergency. To, uh, to prevent hoarding. And looting. Yeah, hoarding and looting. Both reprehensible activity, eh? Never heard of any such organisation. What, hey, what are you doing? Oh. No weapons. They haven't got so much as a penknife. I, uh, I'm taking the bag, sir. The lovely umbrella the food, and this comfortable-looking flask of very nice bread. That's robbery. Oh, it is. It is. And if you want to quarrel about it, well, my good friend, my trusty stick here, Mr. Punch, he'd have a short, hard sentence to say to you very directly. <laughs> what? Oh, I hate that sound. It's like chalk on a blackboard. It sets my teeth on edge. Well, you'd better run along and help her, hadn't you? Off you go. Oh, and good luck. Best off. Best of British luck with that. You dirty foul beast! What are they doing to her? What do you think they're doing to her? Get away from her! Come on. I, I think I won't. What? I'll throw stones at them from here. I was good at cricket. Look! Oh, careful, you'll hit her! Well, that hardly matters. She... She's ruined anyway. You see? Ah, they're running off. <laughs> I've saved the day. Does it take so little time for all the decencies to be abandoned? Let's go and look. Oh, she resisted them. Oh, brave soul. You can't mean she's dead. They had the same idea as me about stones, but they clubbed her with one. It's possible she died before they violated her. Praise God. I think I won't. I think I feel sick. I suppose you don't like the fact it was me who drove them off. Those bad men. Me. Little David. Little hero. Against Goliath. To Goliath. What I'm thinking about, if you must know, is my wife. I'm thinking about Margaret. Suppose she's been. Oh, never mind. Why am I talking to you? She cannon. Cannon? No. Nothing terrestrial. Nothing of ours. And it's ahead of us. It's in London. this time. They brought something else. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I don't want to see what's happening. Dear God. What? What could you see blasphemer? I'm not sure. Burning. I can smell it. It's the city on fire. Of course, the city's on fire, but that doesn't explain why the smoke is that horrible green-yellow colour. It's a visitation. It's gas. Some kind of gas from that shell. How could a gas come from a shell? The city's being poisoned. Look how heavy that strange smoke lies. The wind isn't shifting. Can you imagine what it must be like to be inside there? The wind won't blow it in our direction. Think about them inside the city, not yourself. I would, but I can't. I'll try. I wish there was someone kind to pray to. I hate that sound. What is it? Heat rays. Anyone trying to escape has simply been boiled away. You can see the rays flashing out. What a sight. Look how proudly the Martians move with such divine assurance. Oh, apocalypse. I must have faith. I count 53 of them. That number must be significant in some way. It must be significant. This was London. If London has fallen, 
There is no hope. There is no hope. What do we do now? I had planned to preach in the streets of the city. Do you think I still should? Should I be brave and go in there? I don't care what you do. Look. Are they moving? Are they turning towards us? She couldn't have survived. I hoped. I just hoped it was quick. It smells like glory. If you can smell something, the wind must be shifting. Come on. Uh, wait for me, Mr. Fenton! Wait for me! We have to stop, Mr. Fenton. We can't. Uh... In here. Mr. Fenton? I have to lie down. Get up! We'll be safe here. Safe! Or trapped. Trapped. Or safe! Yes. Oh, cold. Cold. I don't think I can stop the drafts. Ah, uh, oh, crack winds and blow. Uh, oh, we'll be very cold later. Uh, 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 my mother had a horror of drafts. Uh, uh, but uh, I'll do my best. I'll try and get it uh, nicely sealed in. Uh, safe. Trapped. Oh, cold. I wish those mock soldiers had not stolen the matches. I wish they had not stolen the food, but you stole it first. Let him who is without sin cast the first stone. I cast the first stone. Those men violating that poor lady, so that must mean I am without sin. Are you hungry? Are you hungry and tired and heart sick and forlorn? We will be safe here, I hope. Do you hope? No, don't. No, it's a sin to hope. We could try and sleep. We could close our eyes. But when we close them, we see such things. My name is David, but they are more than Goliath. They are his avenging angels. I am Job tonight. I am cast down, but I'm still a prophet. I hope the very last little prophet preaching to a stupid sleeping man. Are you awake, Mr. Fenton? Please be awake. You'll want to be quick. The dew will evaporate. Lick it. It's not much, but it's something. A bit of moisture. What? I'm going out to get something to drink. I'm leaving you today. I'm going on my own from here. No, no. No, Mr. Fenton, get back. Put it back. Please, Mr. Fenton, get out. No, no, no. You're going nowhere. Try a turn at my little peephole over in the corner. It looks out on the farmyard. Go on, but call quietly. What are you talking about? <laughs> three of them. I could only see three of them. A holy trinity on three legs, but there could be more. They don't know we're here. There's something metal over in one corner. Big, but you can't really see. Mr. Fenton, we're safe here. Come and look. Put your hand over one eye and you'll see better. That's what Ogilvy said. Who's Ogilvy? A dead man. What are they doing? God knows. We have to get away. Yes. Only we can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. That's a better word than can't. Would you like to recant, Mr. Fenton? Repent of all your arrogance, your worldly wisdom. The next time you speak like that, I will hit you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we be friends? Can we shake hands like gentlemen? We've no food. We've nothing to drink. I saved half the door for you to lick. There's a good bit of dew on it. I left you half. Thank you. Let's shake hands. David. Robert. come away. What are they building? You've been crouched there for hours. Hours today, hours yesterday. They don't sleep. The machines they ride in don't sleep. 
sleepless angels. You understand the Martians you see in the 30 foot high metal contraptions aren't the actual Martians. Those things are just machines, just engines. Inside them are creatures like you and me, of flesh and blood, well, not like you and me. I've seen them. I might be the only one alive who's seen them. They look like skin, like it's, um, it glistens. Mouths, like not mouths at all, hinged horribly, and the eyes are huge and with a look of such, I don't know, I really don't know. Can't think about that. They're constructing a building of some sort. I've never seen anything put together so quickly, buildings, homes and houses. They're putting down roots, obviously planning to stay. We could try and escape now. While they've stopped. Maybe they've gone. Why would you want to escape them? They're the angels of God, aren't they? Why don't you rush out and embrace them? Yes! I am well reproved. Don't doubt the message because the messenger is so weak. I am afraid. Sorry. I don't want you to rush out and embrace them, by the way. You're a very literal man. Well, at least it rained last night and we both got a decent puddle to drink from. That's a good sign, mm. isn't it? Loaves and fishes would be nice too. We need a miracle. If they're not back in an hour, we make a run for it. No birds. No bird sound. I was something of an amateur. An amateur ornithologist. I was. Uh, I was something. Let me see. Let me see. I found the peephole. It's mine. Move over. You're always there. Let me see. No. It's not fair. You hurt me. Ah, you hurt my arm. Don't look. If you have any sense, don't look. Are you crying, Robert? What did you see? Did you see your wife? Do they have your wife? Are they hurting her? No. I don't know. They were in a cage. The people, the poor people. It was more like a net. High up in the air, carried by the Martian in his machine. The people are... They are lying any which way, like fishes caught. That's why I said a, a net, maybe uh, 20 or 50. No. Most are still alive. Screaming in pain, shouting, fighting each other. I saw... Uh, blood dripping. I saw blood and, and clearly some, some of them were crushed dead, but I could see others moving. Driving about, trying to stand up, standing on, on, on the, the dead and the injured. The more injured, they were all injured. Children. All ages, everyone. It was... Fishes of men. They are fishes of men. What are they doing with them? What are they going to do with them? I was walking towards the building. A prison? I don't think we should let them. Oh, I think we must. You look then. No. You. Please. Please. Very well. It's hard to see. There's a, a shelf on the outside of the first building. It swung one of the nets up there. It's high, but the net's gone rigid. It's, it's, uh, it's more like a square now. How did that... It's just disappeared. It's, uh, it's vanished. The, the, the net, the, the, the cage, all, all the people vanished. Let me look. Let me look. I can, I, I can look now. What are they doing with us? They're standing round the building, all three of them. They're dropping these long metal ropes into the building. Pulsing. The ropes, or whatever they are, are pulsing. They're swaying. The Martians are swaying. I don't want to see. I don't want to think. They look happy. You can tell when a Martian is happy. Can you smell no, that? No. I... And there's stuff coming out of the back of the building. It's, it's coming from inside the building. It's being pumped out. What is it? It's slurry. Get away. Don't look. Oh. What's the... oh. Oh. I see it now. 
Aha, I understand it now. Don't. The building is a pig pen, Mr. Fenton. It's a pig pen. They eat us. God has sent down angels that have an appetite for us. Beyond horror. Food, food. Will they breed us for their convenience? Is, is that what it's to become of us? Yes. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, the Greeks call it hubris. We said original sin. We sensed something. We knew some of us out Stop, 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 stop doing that. They'll hear you. Uh, we're cows. We're sheep. It wasn't a parable. He was a shepherd. We are sheep, but not his. We are theirs. I must... Uh, what must I Sit do? Down. This is just stupidity. You, you're shocked. Of course you're shocked. Stop, 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 pig. Stop, pig. Stop, God, calm down. I hear you. They don't like a screaming. I knew precious little about him. He was mad, or rather, maddened. He seemed, in many ways, a well-meaning, sensitive young man. I took the action I did because his madness would have betrayed us. I'm sorry. More sorry than I could. Is that the best you can do? Is that the best you can write? Some bloody epitaph, that? My name is Robert Fenton, and I admit... What? Before whom? No judges or juries now, no due process, no insolence of office, nothing of that kind starting to stink. He's starting to stink. Don't write that, you fool. Give the poor man his dignity. You've already called him a madman. A dead, stinking madman. I have to get out. I'm in the grave with him if I stay here. <laughs> <laughs> They're leaving. They've gone. They've gone. They've gone, just like that. <laughs> Had a little snack, bit of a picnic, and then moved on. <laughs> Cowards! me that way. I'm going to keep quiet and creep about. Water. How nice the air is. How lovely the moon is. How ruined it all looks here. You, Ogilvy. Can you see them? Ogilvy is dead, you jump. I know that. I know that. Everyone might be dead. Might well be the last man on earth. Adam in reverse. Something's moving. It's a... It's a deer. That's all. The deer on two legs? No, no. It's, it's human. It's definitely a long way off. And human. Oh, my lucky star. <laughs> Hello? Hello? That's foolish. That's foolish to hear me. 
Hello? Hello? Over here? Turn, you bastard. Turn and see me. Yes, yes. Hello? He's turned. Hello? What are you doing? No, 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 don't, 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 don't run, come here, come here, come here, don't, don't, run away. Don't be broken, don't be broken, there's a good chap, there's a good angle. What's wrong with the grass? Go on, it's, 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 it's gone to sludge. Nasty sludge is not fair, it was my fault I fell. Hello, Mr. Fenton. Fancy meeting you again. I need another half mile to go. You said that half an hour ago. You're lucky. I don't often come down this way. Not much in the way of pickings now. I set up one of their kitchens, down in one of the farms nearby. Scared all the local wildlife away. By wildlife, I mean people. I know the place. I was there. I escaped. Well, that's brave work. You impress me. Keep hobbling. Do you have any food? Oh, yeah. Shelves and shelves of it. All prime. Meat, mostly. Rigged up a bit of a cart to carry my stuff to my hiding hole. Lovely little cave. Very snug and very private. Some smart boy followed the tracks, tried his luck, tried to rob me. Killed him. Now, I'm a bit more careful. That is a bit of a warning, Mr. Fenton. Uh -oh. Only a bit. Old. It's down that bank. Quick look round. Nothing. Not a blessed sight or sound. Just us. Lovely. Here you are. Soap. Something that I do for a towel. And a nice sharp razor. I'll shave first, before washing. I'm not sure my hands are steady enough to shave. I want food. I haven't eaten more than a few berries for days. I came across a dead cow. <laughs> that wasn't much fun. Or much use. OK. Look at my hands. Steady as a rock. I'll shave you. Make you look like a civilised man again. And then, what would you say to a tin of steak and kidney pie and a can of peaches? Thank you. I bet you'd say thank you. Thank you. And you liked your little drop, didn't you, Mr Fenton? We got the good stuff here. Nice little pub raid, that was. Chin up. No, I mean, put your chin up. Oh. Right. Hold still. So... Tell me all your adventures. Um, I... oh. Not easy to talk, is it? Don't want me nicking you, getting a mouthful of soap. I'll tell you mine then, bear gist. I went to Aldershot and there wasn't much to see. They had cleared the town out proper. Just slag and rubble by the time I got there. No use. A lot of people milling about and then they, the spiders, I call them spiders on account of I hate spiders and they look like them. Turn your head. Don't flinch. They came back, played pot shot with the survivors. I ran then, for a few days, I, I don't know what I did. I got hold of a gun somehow. It's in my pocket now. I always have it there. So, you know. Here you are. 
Have a look in the mirror. What do you see? Not your old self, perhaps. Well, what do you think? Oi, steady, steady. You chuck it up as soon as you chucked it down. Oh, it's wonderful. Porridge, golden syrup. Nice and easy on the old tongue. Be quiet tomorrow. I'll fix us a brew, put a drop of something warming in it, will I? I can't thank you enough. Well, you were decent enough to me. Fed and clothed me in a manner of speaking. Not that you had much choice. Oh, your face when you came down and saw me tucking away in your kitchen. <laughs> 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 Seems a world away. Ah, that's the spirit. Hard to believe it was only weeks ago. Well, then don't believe it. Believe something else. I'm not sure I understand. I'm sure you don't. You've had no time to think. All your adventures. Rescuing those poor girls from those thugs. Planning that brilliant escape from the spiders there. You've been in the wars while I have sat it out a bit and had time to think. Time don't matter anymore. Nothing we thought does. For instance, where do you think we are now? Um, we, we went south from London and then west. I lost track a bit. Um, Kent? Sussex? No, not Kent, not Sussex, not even bloody Yorkshire. We're not even in England. And what do I mean by that? But go on. I want someone to talk to that talks back. I don't know. The ones that own it do the naming, see? When we were in charge, it weren't the horses and bloody rabbits that decided what the country was called. We did. Top dogs. But we're not now. Like, when we went to those foreign lands, we could call their hills and mountains what we liked and the name stuck. God knows what the Martians call this place. This planet. This particular bit of the planet. Not England. Not Britain. That's gone. France too. Everywhere else. I wonder if those Frenchies tasted of garlic when they ate them. What do you think? I don't know. You don't know much, do you? You want to buck yourself up, Johnny? My name's Robert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad I found you. You'll do. Now, why don't you make yourself useful and dig a little pit in the corner there? We need somewhere to store the coal. Shouldn't you be quiet? It's to warn them I'm here. Warn them? The waifs. Bloody strays. The other people. Might get the cart as close as you can. Good. Coal. A cellar full of riches. Found it last week. Question was, how to get it out before it was all pilfered. You're the answer, aren't you? I think I heard something. From over there, by the horse trough. You probably did hear something. OK, my lad! Show yourself! No! Yeah. They know I've got a gun, see? And a big box of bullets. Did ya? Bloody rats. I'll stay up, do guard. You drop down, bag up the coal in those old sacks, find a bit of rope for the neck, and we'll haul it up. Are there other people here? Yes. Yes, there are. Of course they're bloody are. Spiders can't kill us all. There's always a quiet spot to crawl into and hide. We need to keep our distance from the other people, no? Doesn't sound much of a life. You're wrong. It's the best kind of life there is. But down you go. Three kinds, listening? Hmm. Three kinds of human. There's the food kind, the meat and cattle kind. Now, that's tragic, of course it is, but 
it's not our tragedy. Cut yourself off. Don't think of them as people. Don't think about them at all, if you can. Next, there'll be the pets. The Martians won't want us as pets. And maybe some of the pets will learn a bit of Martian and amuse their masters. They'll learn tricks. What a life. What a life, eh? If that's the case, we may as well... But then, there's the third kind. The third kind is the wild man. The one in the hills, independent, free, living his own life according to his own rules. That is who we are. And do you know what? It's not a bad life, is it? <laughs> living in a cave. What happens when the tin food runs out, when the guns and bullets run out? Spears. We'll make spears. But you're not thinking of the thing we really need, and that is women. Ah. We need women. I mean, wives. We have to find a nice couple, maybe three or four. We'll talk about that. Sturdy is what we're looking for. We look like civilised men, shaved and spruce. With the cave and the goods, we're a prospect. I'm a married man. We both were. Now is now, old chap. I'll marry you to yours. You'll marry me to mine. No free love nonsense. And you'll be rescuing them. You're good at that. Rescuing women. Escaping from the Martians. You're a hero. They'll be grateful. And we'll teach the kids how to survive in this new world. Ah. You've been a while. I went south. The gentleman went south. And what did he find? I found a forest. I don't blame you. It's just me. a pretense, all this. This cave. Free men. Doesn't matter how many tins we have or don't have. Make you any happier thinking that? I didn't even know what I was seeing. I thought for a moment that I'd cut my head and that blood had somehow fallen into my eyes. It goes on for miles, miles and miles of red forest marching across the land. Didn't you like the look of it? They've taken everything from us. All our trees are dying. That, that grass I slipped on and twisted my ankle, it, it was rotting. How close is it now? Less than five miles. So here we are. On Mars now. Without the inconvenience of having to travel there. <laughs> this is the end. No, no, no we, we, we won't be able to survive this. Did you see it? Did you go close? It, it's monstrous. It's, it's obscene. Bulbous things, plants crawling. And who knows what creatures live in there? They're, they're animals. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I was close enough. I saw a man eat one of the leaves. The fronds, the things. Did it kill him? I didn't stay to see. I've made a kind of corned beef hash, if you're interested. No. Nah. Have a drink, then. Have a few. Uh... want to steal your gun, but I have to. <sighs> One gun, six bullets and a bottle of whiskey. That's all. And by the way, I never rescued those poor girls. I never did. But I think you knew that. You bastard. You poor bastard. Ammonia, fennel or something, oil. <coughs> Worse than oil. You've even altered the way the wind sounds. It'll take months, only months, and this whole world will be a richer, riper version of your own. It may take generations more, but your, your descendants will learn to live and walk in our gravity. It will be a sad old legend then, us. A few stuffed in a museum, maybe. Folk stories. Wonder if they drink. Or play cards, tell lies and laugh. 
We'll never know anything. <laughs> Come on, then! Here I am! And maybe I have a new marvelous weapon in my hand that will destroy you all! Come and find out! Come and kill me, because God forgive me, I can't quite get a bullet into my own head. Hello! I'm here! What's that? A howl of triumph! A victory song! Rule Britannia! You do rule Britannia, you didn't even need us to surrender. I'm here! You didn't spy it over here! Fry me up! Make it quick! Like a man. Please, like a man. and dead now, my boy. <laughs> Stupid trees. Stink. Better go. Better go. Better go where? I promise you, I, I swear to you, I'd bought its head if I could have carried it. I am St. George, the Dragon Slayer. Stand your ground, sir. Stand it still. Look at the forest! The forest is falling! The smell will be here soon. I don't know what's happened. I didn't kill it. The Martian just keeled over. That was a joke, me saying I killed it. A stupid joke. Couldn't, couldn't kill one with this, could I? I'll ask you again, sir, to put that gun on the ground. Oh, yes, I will. Do it now, sir. My name is Robert Fenton. And mine is Mrs. Hatton. Now, sir, the gun. Do you, um, do you actually know how to shoot with one of those? A bow and arrow? I do. <laughs> Maid Marion, are you, my dear? <laughs> my name is Mrs. Hatton. I'm the postmistress here. Was. I'm just asking for a bit of food. And I am telling you, you can't have any. Well, that doesn't seem very nice. I see you walking away, Robert Fenton, or I'll shoot you. When you've given me something to eat, then I'll go just, just a bite and a bit to carry. Margaret! I wasn't Margaret yesterday, and I'm not Margaret today. I'm the postmistress. What's my name? Mrs. Hatton. Good. That's four days in a row. You're well free of the fever. Now, time to change the dressing. Is that vinegar? Vinegar and carbolic. Best thing I have. It'll sting, but then afterwards you get soup, so no shouting and screaming. It frightens the children. I can't clench my right hand. I need my right hand. No, it'll come back. Or maybe it won't. You brought it on yourself. Yes. Good. Oh, we're doing nicely. Now we can move about as we like. We've the old schoolhouse all set up and a few more stragglers have come in. Lift your arm. As you can. Anne came here this morning, rode in on a horse. A horse? Said there's no signs of them all the way to the sea. 
says the forests have shrunk to nothing, except a sludge and a bad smell. It looks ugly. That? That's a lovely bit of stitching. I did it myself. You really think it's all over? Seems like. Now, this is your last day lying down. Been in this bed a whole fortnight. There's work to be done. I'm afraid I'm, I'm not really in a condition. I'll find a use for you. Never fear, Mr. Fenton. Ah, there you are, Mr. Fenton. For a village possessing only 60 souls at present, you have a wonderful way of sequestering yourself. You were not at the service yesterday. No. I do think it important. For people's morale. It's my view that morale is everything. We have a duty to be confident. And the vicar's a good man, in essence. I am preparing for this afternoon's class, Mr. Bridgelock. Good. Good. <laughs> I have read one of your books, you know. Geography this afternoon. The actual land masses will not have changed, regardless of what has happened to the man-made countries. Oh, not ours. England is England. Britain will be Britain. We have a government in Oxford, and I am very proud to be a travelling emissary of that government. We must pull together, knit up the raveled sleeve of care. No doubt. Mrs. Mrs. Hatton is an excellent woman. Wonderful that she managed to keep six orphaned children and two old men alive during the recent... Um, invasion. Uh, but now, with more to manage than just an orphanage, we need proper individuals. Uh, not me. Uh, we were just talking, Mrs Hatton. There's lunch set by for you, sir. Uh, you're very good, thank you. So, what explanation do the Oxford men have for the sudden and catastrophic demise of our Martian visitors? <laughs> it's our bugs. Our microbes. They accomplished what man could not. Similar to the problems caused when we brought smallpox to the New World, only on a huge scale. Even their plants succumbed. Mother Nature. Yes, that's a very nice, succinct way of putting it. It's a bit more complicated than that. Uh, so, Mr Fenton... I hope I have repaid my debt to you, Mrs Hatton, this last six weeks. I'm sorry I was such a fool, but I am well enough to travel. Where have you to go to? Mm, my point, exactly. Your wife is dead. And the children at least like you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs Hatton, for that commendation. I'm going home. No point in... No point in dawdling. Lydia. Uh, yes, Lydia. Well, how wonderful you. We never expected. We, we thought we. Uh, uh, Margaret's in the garden. She, she's. She's all right. <laughs> she's Margaret, <laughs> my wonderful sister. <laughs> go and see her. Uh, do, uh, do, do you think you'd better go and forewarn her? No. I wouldn't know what to say. I'd say the wrong thing. <laughs> it's my special gift, isn't it? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you apologise, and it was years ago. It's, it's just a shock. <laughs> it's a very pleasant shock. Oh, just go round. Oh. You look like you've been in the wars. <laughs> She'll be kind to you, I'm sure. <laughs> I would have tried to get a message. Good God. I would have tried to get a message to you if I'd thought for a moment. But I never thought. I, I, I didn't believe it possible. I, I thought you couldn't have survived London. I know thousands did in the event. But the day I was there, it looked very bad. Margaret, my love, will you put down the spade?
You're thinner. You're m much, much thinner. <laughs> yes. What on earth are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> the postboy's trousers. I swapped one of your waistcoats, one of your fancy ones, your favourite, the red one. I don't mind, but of course I don't. This is a bit like a miracle. <laughs> Who could have thought this? I, I, I never thought I'd see you again. How did you escape? And how did you find Lydia? Uh, she's living here now, uh, with little Theo and the baby. Though the baby isn't really a baby anymore. She's almost walking. That's fine, that's, that's fine that they're here. I mean it. I never went to London. I got off the train you put me on. I thought, why am I going to London? To stay with your brother when I know no one else there? Poor Gregory. I don't suppose. No. So, I got off the train and I made my way to Lydia's. I thought I'd be safer there anyway. I'm planting potatoes. In the rose garden. What's wrong with your arm? I, I, I've had adventures. We all have. You're awake. I'm sorry, Robert, I can't... No, I, I mean... I thought perhaps there were um, things we might talk about. Yes. This is awkward, but it must be said. Um, did anything... Anything happen to you on, on your way to find Lydia or afterwards? I, I'm not asking because I would be angry or have any sense of blame. I myself saw some dreadful things. Dreadful men behaving. And what did you do when you saw them? Intervened, of course. I, I chased one set of thugs who were behaving very badly. Well done. That was brave. There were two of us. The soldier, Billy? No. Not him, someone else. My, my point is, if anything occurred that perhaps um, hurt or, or, or shocked you or injured you or, or made you feel different, damaged in some way, I, I would, of course, not blame you. I would absolutely forgive you once you'd explained, not in any detail. That might be painful. It can be good to get things off the chest. Did you kill the soldier, Robert? Is that what you're no, saying? No, 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 I absolutely did not. I, I stole his gun. That's all. No, th that's all beside the point. I am... I'm asking you these questions, Margaret, as your husband, about what may have happened to you that, that might explain. Obviously, we both want our old, comfortable, happy life restored. We were... in a different world during that time, and... Perhaps we said and did things that do not fit into the world we find ourselves back in. Perhaps we might need a period of readjustment. You think that's all it is? You should try and sleep. Stupid dreams. I have the most stupid dreams. Will I get up and make you some tea? Thank you. Wine, Doctor. Say, elderflower nonsense. I miss my wine. Listen, no nightingales in the garden. I think there are fewer birds about since. Well, a lot fewer. And midges. Well, oh, I don't miss the midges. I didn't want to have the windows open in the first place. There's talk that the new king will be crowned in the spring. That will cheer us all up. And I even heard a rumour about the railway. Rubbish. I'm sorry, but rubbish. Bridges, the track, everything was destroyed in the late debacle. How in God's name can we replace all of that? How is that arm of yours? Better. You should let me take a look at it. No need. We appear to have forgotten how to do dinner party conversation. Sorry. It will take time to recover for us as individuals and for us as a nation. A toast. <clears throat> to what? To getting another glass of wine. Doctor? 
Certainly. <laughs> the stars still look beautiful, though, don't they? Mm. I'm glad you think so. There might be other worlds up there with nicer creatures than our late visitors. Perhaps we might go out there ourselves one day and find out. I think we should cower in our little corner and hope they all ignore us. I don't think they were monsters. I mean, <clears throat> they did look rather horrible, judged by our standards. But in behaviour, they behaved in exactly the same way as we do. That's a rather bleak assessment of us, my dear. Advanced civilizations should have advanced morals. That is how it should work. If they had morals at all, or feelings, or anything, we'd understand. We don't understand anything. We have to stop being afraid. Do you think they will come back? No. Yes, don't know. Can't know. What do you think? What, what do I think? Does it matter what we think? We just wait indefinitely. I don't know. Can we change the subject? Or is there only one subject these days? One expedition lost? Why should that deter them? It never deterred us. And when they come back, we're weaker than ever. Our beautiful germs will do for them again. That's more to the point than any armaments of ours. Perhaps they'll be inoculated next time. No, they won't. They won't know. They won't know what happened down here. It will just be a total mystery. Surely. I think it was a last, doomed, desperate attempt of a dying race to find a new home. Oh, do you really think that? Listen to you. How can you be so damn... Robert! Well, thank you for dinner. I'd better be making tracks. And I will tactfully get up and see you to the door. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Good night. I shouldn't have spoken to him like that. Come on. Let's go into the garden. We can clear up tomorrow. Let's go and have a look up at the sky, just to show we're not afraid. It'll be cold out there now. Oh, not that cold. I'm staying inside. In part two of The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, dramatized by Melissa Murray, Robert was played by Blake Ritson, The Curate by Carl Prekop, and Billy by Samuel James. Mrs. Hatton was Georgie Glenn, Bridge North, Nicholas Murchie, Margaret, Sancho McCormack, Lydia, Sarah Ridgway, and the Doctor was David Stern. Other parts were played by John Dougal and David Sturzacker. The pianist was Colin Guthrie, and the director was Mark Beebe. There'll be more from H.G. Wells tomorrow, when a wounded angel spends a few disconcerting days in a small Victorian village. The wonderful visit is over on 4 Extra tomorrow afternoon.